Everybody, my name is Erica, and I'm standing here next to my obstacle course nemesis. The climbing wall. It requires upper body strength, lower body strength, <laughs> coordination, strategy, and above all, it requires resilience. Resilience is getting back up when something gets you down. And Trying to make it over a climbing wall always gets me down, because I fall a lot. No! Oh, no! 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 Oh, no! But this time, I'm ready. I've got the right gear. I've got the climbing chalk. <coughs> I've read everything there is to put. OK. I've read everything there is to know about climbing walls on the internet. I know all the tips, tricks, and rules. There is no way I can fail this time. So, let's climb. 15 minutes of climbing later. Okay, so, um, it's not working out. I've fallen like 30 times. Look, I don't think this chalk stuff is 
working the way it's supposed to, and I have used a ton of it. Ugh. I don't understand. I have followed all the rules. I have done everything I was supposed to. Why am I not better at this? Why do I keep falling? Why me? I've also been trying at this for like a whole 15 minutes. Life is so hard. No one in the history of the world has ever had this much trouble as me. Ah, I don't understand. In today's story, we'll hear about Paul and Silas. They were having a really hard life, but instead of being over dramatic, they sang songs. Maybe I should try that. Climb every mountain, fall every stream. I don't think it's working. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 16 through 40. Paul, also known as Saul, had once been a terrible enemy of anyone who followed Jesus. But then, Paul met Jesus himself and everything changed. Jesus is the Son of God. After a time of prayer and study, Paul began to travel further and further from Jerusalem. He shared the good news of Jesus, started brand new churches everywhere he went. In some places, he was welcome. But in others, Paul and his friends were run out of town. Stone them! Stone them! Still, Paul kept going. When God called him to Macedonia, Paul and his friends set sail and traveled toward the city of Philippi. Few Jews lived there, but God opened the heart of a woman named Lydia to believe. Her home became the start of a fledgling church. From there, Paul shared about Jesus all over the city. Come, uh, let's go down to the place of prayer. Along the way, Paul and Silas were met by a girl who chased them, crying out, These men serve the Most High God. They're telling you how to be saved. Though the words were true, the girl was controlled by a spirit who did not come from God. Day after day, she followed Paul and Silas. These men serve the Most High God. These men serve the Most High God. These men serve the Most High God. These men- Enough! Paul spun around to face the girl. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. Immediately, the spirit left the girl. Oh, oh, I feel like myself, thank you. Thank you. Unfortunately, some men had been using the girl to make money for them. Since she had been freed by the power of Jesus, they could no longer do this. You've ruined our business. Yeah, now we're gonna make you pay. The men grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the judges. These men are Jews. They're making trouble in our city. Yeah, they're telling people to do stuff that's against Roman law. Get rid of them! Without any chance to share their story, Paul and Silas were whipped. Then they were hauled to the jail. Guard them with your life. Yes, sir. Paul and Silas were marched down into the depths of the jail. Mm, it's damp in here. And dark. And deep. Their feet were fastened with chains. Good night, men. Though the jailer had locked the cell tightly, he may have paused to glance back at the men inside. He had heard the words Paul and Silas preached of a God who could forgive sins, a God who could truly save. It's all foolishness, right? The day faded, and so did the small amount of light in the prison cell. How's your back? Sore, but I've been through worse. Paul and Silas were shut away in a damp cell, unable to move freely, with painful wounds on their back, even though they had done nothing wrong. They could have complained, they could have sulked, but instead, they made a choice. Are you asleep? Not even close. You know, God sent an angel to get Peter out of prison that one time. Yeah, well, God can get us out of here too, or give us the strength to stick it out. <clears throat> Amazing grace, how sweet 
the sound that saved a wretch like me. You're making me wretched, is what? As Paul and Silas sang, God sent a powerful earthquake to shake the prison. Doors flew open and chains fell off. We're free! Jolted from sleep, the jailer staggered into the prison to find every door hanging open. No! The jailer knew he could be killed for allowing prisoners to escape, so he pulled out his own dagger, ready to take his own life. Uh, don't harm yourself. We are all here. You stayed? Why? Guards, bring light. As torches flared around them, the jailer saw that Paul and Silas and the other prisoners had not escaped. He knew that the God Paul and Silas preached about must be incredibly powerful, so he threw himself at their feet. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus, then you and everyone living in your house will be saved. The jailer took Paul and Silas into his own home and washed their wounds as they shared the truth about Jesus with everyone. We want to be baptized right now. After Paul and Silas baptized the jailer and his family, the jailer prepared a meal for them. Everyone was filled with joy. In the morning, the judges of Philippi sent a message to the jailer to release Paul and Silas. We are Roman citizens, but they beat us in public and threw us in prison with no trial. Now they want us to leave quietly? I don't think so. When the judges heard this, they were afraid. They came and apologized to Paul and Silas before asking them to leave. Paul and Silas returned to Lydia's home and encouraged all the believers in Jesus. Then they left, knowing God would be with them, whatever they faced next. and Silas were thrown in prison for following Jesus? They did nothing wrong and they got punished for it? If that had happened to me, I would be angry or sad or even mad at God. But what did they do? They praised God. They, whoa, Paul and Silas chose joy. That couldn't have been easy for them. I know it wouldn't have been easy for me. No! 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 Oh, we're going somewhere. No! Ah! So, here's a question for you. When life gets hard, how do you react? Like, maybe when you get in trouble and have to stay in your room? Or when you have to do chores? Or maybe life just isn't going the way you want or expect? Do you get angry? Do you get sad? Do you whine and complain? Why me? Or, do you choose joy? Do you choose to focus on what's good instead of what's bad? Like for me, climbing this wall is hard. I keep falling down, but do you know what's good? I'm still trying. I still have some of the strength God has given me left. Plus, God loves me. Even if I fall 30 times, God loves me. That can bring joy no matter how hard life may get. So. Here's the one thing to remember. You can choose joy when life gets hard. It may not always be easy, so ask God to help you choose joy. It'll help you face any mountain, no matter how tall. I've got a long way to go. See you next time. I'm so close. <laughs>